Hey guys, so joining us on the Celebrity Couch today, we have... Uh, Peter Tonks, um, I'm the Location Manager and the Director of Life in the Dead Zone. So, uh, film and TV is no stranger to you. I see you've worked in the industry for a long time. Been, How did it all start? How did it all start? Okay, I actually went to film school back in Christchurch. So, uh, when it was above the Duxville Arts, it was an awesome year. I don't know, I forget which year it was, but it was way back. And um, third year of the film school. The, the film school itself now is now the one that's in Wellington. So, it, so I think it went bust about 10 years after I did it and then come up here. But um, yeah, no, it was, a, it was a fantastic year. We got to shoot film and yeah, met a lot of people. A lot of the students I was in the course with are working in the film industry still. So, so yeah, it was, uh, uh, Ducks Deluxe downstairs is always, you know, good vegetarian food and bands playing. Tell me, what was it like working on Lord of the Rings? It was pretty damn good, actually. Um, it was a bit of a bit of a changer as far as you know. You, you learnt a lot. You had you were, it was a whole big difference from you know. I mean, before that, I was working on Cloud Nine sort of kids TV shows, and then yeah, went 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 to that one. It was just a yeah, just the budgets were way bigger. That like we probably had like ten vehicles, and then on on Cloud Nine, and then Lord of the Rings, you hundred vehicles you had to. Sort of managed so it was, yeah, it was a, it was a really it was a pretty amazing experience actually because it just put you to a whole new level you know sort of put you up there with the um on the global market really i suppose um got to work with this great guy zane weiner who was a he's sort of the pm or one of the american guys that come over and he was yeah, he was he was a bit of a hard stick that guy but just had a lot of knowledge uh barry osborne those sort of guys just you know like as you know they worked on things like um apocalypse now and so forth so yeah, it was just pretty amazing to be sitting in offices with them and, you know, getting their experience. And also, you know, reading with Pete on that as well and all that. So that was, that was pretty good. Yep. Did you start on that movie from start to finish? Um, no, I, I didn't actually. I got asked to start with uh, and I had to turn it down because I was on another job and I'd sort of just committed to them. So I came on about three or four, maybe might have been six months later. Um, so yeah, I missed out on the first little, first little push, but yeah, I, I came on after that. There was, there was about three of us location managers that were doing it, and there was a location coordinator. So we just got jumped from location to location, so it didn't matter too much. I mean, obviously, I probably missed out on some of the more bigger locations at that point because I was coming in late. But yeah, but I went on to do the the pickups like I did. The two towers and the, and the Return of the King. So I was kind of the only guy around when they did got the Return of the King because it was uh, just sort of pickups. They had shot a lot of the stuff from the initial shoot. So what sort of involved? Obviously, you go around New Zealand and you look at locations that might fit certain, you know, Alan Lee kind of illustrations, I suppose. Yep. But what what's really involved in that kind of job? I. Because most of the big locations, you know, the, the, were all done at that stage. So I, because I was the Wellington based, I didn't do a lot of the um, big, big scouts. I was sort of trying to find the, um, you know, they, they hadn't quite finished shooting at one location. So I had to like find little snippets for, for the bigger locations. So like one example was when uh, Aragorn falls off the, falls off the um, side of the hill when he's being chased by those monsters. Um, he landed in a, in a riverbed and they'd shot some stuff down south but they wanted to do close-ups and all I had to really find was sort of a bouldery sort of um, river so I had to just go around and look for all the rivers and find the find the close-ups. We ended up going to Upper Hutt just down there by, um, what's that area called, Brown Owl, just tucked into a little thing there. So yeah, I was sort of more or less just finding little spots so we could do. Peter didn't want to go too far out of Wellington, like if we were... Peter's time got very expensive back in those days, and you, you know the less travel and the less distance he had to travel, you know it was it was very important actually. Season one, I spoke to uh, Jake and Chester, yep. uh, a couple of very good friends of mine, uh, about life in the dead zone, you know the creative t creativity uh, behind it and whatnot. Recently, I spoke to Dez, who was one of the lead actors in Life in the Dead Zone. Yep. But can you talk to us about Life in the Dead Zone more as a director? Well, I mean, originally, I met Jake because I was working in Christchurch, and, and, and um, Jake was working in a similar field to me in the, the, the repairing of the roads in Christchurch. 
we met up and we were had an interest in film. So we were talking about actually doing a film. Didn't really matter what film it was. And Jake was working with those, you know, the cameras that go under the sewer lines. You, you know what Jake does, I suppose. With the he has the little wee rat cameras that run up and down the sewers. And we'd sort of come up with an idea that we could maybe use those cameras, and we sort of had big slugs coming out of coming out of the sewers and things like that. But then one day I met Chester, who I'd never met before, and Chester actually says, oh, what about this idea? And, and the idea was pretty close to how Life in the Dead Zone ended up. It was just about a council worker that was going around cleaning up zombies in the, in the you know, in an infected zone. And we just thought, shit, we've got this, you know, we've got this city that's half wrecked. Um, obviously a lot of earthquake damage, but we didn't want to show that, so we just sort of showed more of the overgrown, you know, the areas that hadn't been touched for six months, sort of, sort of like Bexley and those sort of places. But there was like streets and streets of just, you know, empty, beat up houses. You get the odd person still living there, but most of the houses were abandoned, so it was, it was great. So we just sort of popped in there. Um, the filming process took a, took a while. We initially did a little test shoot, which we did about three or four days. None of that footage has been seen yet, but some of that stuff was pretty good. Um, and we just sort of drove around a few streets and did, did the sort of uh, the catching of the zombies. Jake was in, Jake was in that. Um, Mickey D, who's Gabe, he was sort of a zombie in that one. And yeah, we, yeah, we did some, yeah, did a bit of a test, did about three or four days there, cut it together, worked like a, worked pretty good. And then we sort of planned for the, the shoot from there. Um, probably took us a few more months to get together and start doing that. And then we just kind of shot it over weekends. And it probably took us maybe almost a year. Just, yeah, it was a bit of a, I don't know exactly how long, but we kind of mucked around. We might get together every two months and do a, do a weekend sort of thing. So it kind of dragged on a little bit. But yeah, it was probably ended up being about 10 days all up, I think. And it was just, yeah, over the weekend, shoot a few scenes. Um, I, I used a lot of the, like the first one of the houses we used was the house that I, I ran my traffic business from. Um, and we just turned that into a set. And then we just, areas that me and Jake had been working in around Christchurch that we, we've been doing the um, sewer runs with the, you know, seeing all the damage and all that sort of stuff but down the sewer lines. We'd sort of knew these little great spots around the city. So we just went back there and just sort of made it up on the on the day really um we had a bit of a storyline but we just sort of everyone got together and t t tossed ideas around and yeah there's des sort of took care of the characters and most of the dialogue was ad libbed by des you know he's a he's an amazing ad libber that guy how does that feel when you know at the end of the day it's not just your baby but it's your baby that's got recognized overseas how does that all feel well it it, it just kind of makes it you know, seem more worthwhile. I mean, like when people, people do, you know, people do like it and appreciate it, get a laugh out of it. I mean, I, I know it's probably not the, you know, it's not, you know, not Lord of the Rings or anything, but it's um, it's definitely good that you know you you put it in festivals and you know people are willing to sort of say yeah, we'll accept it and we'll, we'll nominate it for something that's great. And and I think at this stage we've all had a nomination too, which is great. Des has had the most for his, his great acting, but. I've got a couple for directing, and Chester got a one the other day for special effects. Gabe got Gabe's got a couple for support, supporting actor, and yeah, Jake's the only one who's missed out so far. We'll have to see what we can do for Jake. <laughs> uh, and the award for the most entertaining interview for season one goes to Jake. <laughs> Good one, Jake. There you go. You got something. Uh, so you've worked with uh, Mr. Taika Waititi quite a bit. Yes. Uh, what's it like working with somebody of his skill and knowledge? Um, yeah, no, Tyke is a really relaxed sort of, um, yeah, nice guy to work with actually. Um, I've, I haven't, didn't work on Two Cars One Night, but I have worked on most of his films. I didn't do Boy, but I did, yeah, Eagle vs Shark. Um, what came next? I think Boy was next, wasn't it? I did, um, but I did Will to People, did, um, What We Do in the Shadows, and I, I missed out on Thor, unfortunately. But, <laughs> but, um, but no, no, Tyke is a, Tyke is a lovely guy, and I've, I've also done a lot of, Ads with Tiger, so I yeah, have spent a bit of time sort of driving around scouting with him. What's good about Tiger, he quite likes sort of jumping in the car and going around scouting, which is which is nice. Not a lot of people do that, but you sort of just go around and talk about the, the whole thing, and you know, you sort of get it makes, makes the scouting a bit easier. 
Uh, so I saw that you also worked recently on um, Pork Pie. Uh, loved the remake with Dino Gorman. It was pretty good, wasn't it? Yes, very good. Uh, so, do you want to talk about the, um, you know, your, your services and what you did for that as, uh, what was it, assistant location manager? Yes, uh, I think it was on set, they called me. So, Robin Murphy was um, the location manager, um, obviously with Jeff's daughter and Matt, who directed it, his sister. Uh, I worked with Robin quite a bit. Um, yeah, Robin was the manager and she just yeah, she just got me in to be on, so I, I was just the on set manager pretty much, so she could go out and, you know, preset if the upcoming days and so forth so it was quite a busy little shoot so I didn't when you when you're a location manager you've always thinking about what's coming up what's next you sort of um, you know knocking on doors a lot of behind the scenes stuff uh, but on set there's always these little problems that come up like you know someone's mowing the lawns and they want to stop the sound or you're filming in the city and you've got to you know stop all the pedestrians walking through when you're doing a car shot or whatever so yeah I was just on set stuff so I didn't have to think about any of the uh, you know the upcoming stuff and didn't have to worry about all that but I just had to be there on set and be on sort of standby for the the director and the first AD to you know sort problems out I have a, a traffic background as well so I was sort of in charge of a lot of the traffic stuff that was going on and that one sort of making certain I organized the, the stop go people and all that and sort of made certain that the council you know knew what was going on and, and was in charge of making certain the site was set up so we could do what we needed to do for that because there's a lot of stunt driving we were driving you know down the roads wrong way and things like that and it then turned out pretty good eh? i thought it was i loved it yeah. it was a good film i'm surprised it didn't do as any better because they're only talking about one million or something ridiculous it didn't even it's a bit sad because I, I thought they did a good job with so you've got a whole extensive range of film experiences what would you say say is your most iconic or your most favorite memory out of all of the ones that you've done? Working on Lord of the Rings was pretty good. Um, it's just as far as like, it just, it took you to a whole new level of, you know, dealing with stuff and, and the amount of money they spent was just, you know, like we were popping out marquees every day and it was just an insane experience that one. Uh, as far as memory goes, um, some of my favorite jobs, it's just sort of people I met and that sort of stuff. I mean, one job I had that was really good, but it was way back was, I was, the, the driver for John Boy Walton, believe it or not, a guy named Richie Thomas, um, who was a super lovely guy, and I got to drive him around for six months. It was just, you know, that was a that was a very cushy job. Um, one of the best experiences I had, actually, I have to say, I was um, I worked on Frighteners, and I was only security guard on Frighteners because I was sort of a big guy, so that's one of my first jobs. But I got to go to Peter's, I think it was his 40th birthday party. And Michael J. Fox got up and played Johnny B. Good. And I have to say, that was amazing. And he was played it like he did in the movie. It was a, yeah, that was that was a pretty special time. A special day, I should say. So it hasn't always just been behind the scenes and driving vehicles and stuff. I heard that you had a cameo in Eagle vs. Shark. Yes, yes, that was a bit of fun. You barely recognised me, but yeah, that was fun. Uh, did you know you know where it is, or you just heard about it? <laughs> I just heard about it, but why didn't, why didn't you tell us where oh, it is? Okay. And... Well, you have to look. You have to look pretty hard. But I was a, I was one of the sort of characters in the um, uh, game that um, there was a game that I've forgotten her name. Uh, who's the main character? That plays she playing video games uh, in that competition at the party, and we were there's a bunch of us with the characters inside the video game. So she got to fight. Um, different people. I I got beat up by. I played a sort of a nineteen sort of twenties boxer, so I was sort of in my. I think I was in some tights, and I had to just pretend to be an old style boxer. Uh, I think I think I had a fake moustache on. It was pretty fun. I only took twenty minutes, and um, I have to admit it turned out pretty good. Tim Kaffer, who did the special effects, just shot us pretty quick, and then made it look pretty amazing actually. Uh, so Jake mentioned to me the other day, and I didn't quite understand what he meant, but he said that you were in the behind the scenes for Kong. Yeah, on on Kong, I was the location unit manager, and there was um, they did the diaries of the filming of Kong, and yeah, I'm in a couple of those, but I think there's one where they sort of feature my department, so I'm I'm um, in that in that episode. Um, it's been a while since I saw that, but yeah, if you get out the Kong um, Kong diaries. Um, there's a two 
DVD set. Um, you know, I'm, I'm one of those you know, a bit fat and chubby in those days, so I cringe when I see it. But <laughs> so what's coming up for Mr. Tonks? Um, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I've, look, I've been working on a few scripts for features. Um, I've just got to find people now to trust me to make a feature, and that's a hard process. Um, obviously, like in the dead zone, or hopefully will help, but be. Um, I just. Don't know how seriously people will take, you know, the fund funding people will take life in the dead zone. I'm not, I'm not, yeah, I'll just get out there and try and push those. I mean, me and Dez did another short film that you may not have seen. That's called The Sunshine Man, which is um, which we quite enjoyed doing. Um, I've got a feature written for that, so which is kind of a fun, fun little idea. So I'm, I'm sort of I want to push that one, but it's kind of a reasonably big budget sort of extravaganza. So. I think I've got to build up a bit of more confidence in the funding people before I can really do that one, but it's a, it's a pretty... Well, Peter, it's been great to have you on the Celebrity Couch today. Uh, before we conclude the interview, is there anything else you'd like to add? Um, no, I mean, just thanks for talking to me. Um, look, I just I want more people to see Life in the Dead Zone. They just, yeah, if you haven't seen it, please check it out. It's on online. Um, you can see it on Facebook or on YouTube. Just punch in Life in the Dead Zone. You, know, you get two options. You get my one, or you get the um, the story about the um, the uh, what, the old nuclear explosion in um, Russia. What's that one? Chernobyl. <laughs> um, Chernobyl. Yeah, yeah. So you, either there's two two things that come up. So just forget about the Chernobyl one. Go to the zombie one, and you'll be yeah. Check check it out. Share it, please. That's I want. Just want more people to see it. Oh well, if you like this interview, please comment, share, and share it around and. You get life in the dead zone. Now, if you want to see me take season three on the road, potentially in Auckland, where I have some awesome contacts, then jump over to our Facebook page, www.facebook.com slash entertaining interviews. And around that page, you will see a link on how you can support this channel to better make that happen. Hopefully you enjoyed entertaining interview season two. We had a whole ball of fun filming it. Uh, once again, huge shout out to Tony McDonald from Plastic Groove for the venue and also for the audio engineering, one of our major sponsors, and our other major sponsor, Tim Simpson from Nitro Film, for sponsoring us with the gear. So, like I said, jump over to our Facebook page, check it out, jump in and help us out, take season three on the road, and hopefully we'll be seeing you guys again very soon.